Welcome back to the Brave New World painting series videos where I explain my 12 uh, fan art paintings in relation to the 1932 science fiction novel by Aldous Huxley. The series was sold to a repeat collector of mine named Fred Whitehead through the Jones Gallery of Kansas City, Missouri in 2018. I am the artist Yin Yang. This fourth video about the fourth painting of the series is titled Alcohol and the Surrogate, Bernard Marx, The Random Error. The first three paintings really explain the, um, the foundation of the novel and the rule of law of the 26th century and introduce the antagonist of the book, world controller Mustafa Mon. The fourth and fifth paintings introduce the two protagonists who could not be uh, very much different from one another. This one is Bernard Marx, born in civilization, who's kind of a bad apple. The other one is John the Savage, uh, born as Linda's son on the reservation, unconditioned to civilization until Bernard brings him back with him. In the novel, Bernard is introduced quite suddenly, and no official explanation is given for how he comes to be or his deviant thinking. Betas and other um, case spread rumors that there was alcohol in his surrogate to explain why he is the shortest of all the alphas and has a bit of a Napoleon complex and a competitive nature and to explain the other antisocial character traits that are frowned upon in the 26th century that Bernard displays. But Bernard is also a child prodigy. He tests off the charts compared to all the other alphas and grows up to become the leading psychologist in terms of keeping other, al other alphas happy, even though he secretly hates his job and is himself miserable. Hugsley also gives subtle hints throughout the novel that somehow antagonist world controller Mustafa Mond was responsible for Bernard being the way he is, either by um, bothering him the old-fashioned way or... Um, somehow playing a part in the alcohol, getting into Bernard's surrogate, or influencing the fetus some other way to make Bernard different for his own amusement or his own experiment and um, his own entertainment's sake. It also hints that Mustafa Mon covers his tracks after he does this. Um, and there's other indications in the novel for this as well. Um, Vaughn goes to bat for Bernard again and again and again and shows him bias in favor of all the other alphas repeatedly and makes exception after exception for Bernard's bad behavior with no real logical reason for doing so. Bernard believes in monogamy and wants the woman he sleeps with to be, or, or women he sleeps with, to be 100% faithful to him 100% of the time. Um, which is considered abuse and antisocial selfishness in the 26th century where marriage is illegal. Bernard also wants to learn and grow smarter and become more intelligent than his peers in his free time instead of taking drugs and dancing at raves and participating in group sex like he's supposed to be doing. Worst of all, Bernard wants to change the world for the better and thinks he actually can do it and has always been smart enough to bend the rules far enough to gain attention for himself, but never far enough to break them and get himself sent to an island or deported. Mond explains to uh, Bernard Marx over and over again that the world is perfect and doesn't need changing. So Marx hides his, his decadent ideas carefully but always in the back of his mind has his wheels turning and is really always trying to, to change things and, and cause trouble. Here is Marx in the center of the painting, clearly shorter than Mond and uh, the other females around him. The woman with the fishnet hose and the whip on the right represents the classic image of the female dominant. The woman on the left here in the white lingerie represents more of the submissive type. But Bernard wants just one woman, uh, which is considered unethical. So all these other women are laughing and, and taking pictures and mocking him 
and uh, they mocked him for lots of other reasons, his stature and his other behavior throughout the course of the novel and the movies. I have the all-seeing eye at the top watching, um, a couple other cameras watching, even the robot is filming and holding a pair of handcuffs down here to symbolize Bernard's physical and psychological and sexual imprisonment. I have him surrounded by books, which he loves to read, but isn't supposed to read. A mirror on the wall, some candles used in some sort of ritual or, or for lighting or just for old time's sake. Um, Bernard just wants to be alone and tries to be alone and wishes all the time he could be alone, but, but can never ever be alone per the rule of 26th century law. I have a Rubik's Cube here representing the puzzle of how Bernard came to pass and why he is the way he is. And these paintings on the walls are some decadent subject matters that Bernard enjoys reading about. The, uh, the third year, they call it the Nine Years' War. It's kind of the Third World War that takes place over population and resources around 2060, 2070. Picture of uh, marriage here, uh, an execution here. All he wants to read about is, is forbidden subject matter. We have an aquarium here with some dead fish kind of representing the, the lack of plant and wildlife that uh, the earth no longer contains. When, once we get to the year 2540 AD, down here we have an electromagnetic golf course. For whatever reason, miniature golf survives 500 years into the future and is all the rage for the young people, for <laughs> whatever reason. And here we have Bernard trying to cure himself or help himself overcome his, you know, his deviant ideas and, and his just being so different from everyone else, but still unable to do so. Um, everything he tries, no matter what, just doesn't work. And everything Lon tries um, doesn't work either. Just unable to find what he's looking for. Uh, no matter what, and is always the problem child. So that's really all I have to say about um, painting number four. There's lots of symbolism, and I, I could go on for a while, but thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for video number five, where I'll explain John back on the reservation, Greek, the greeting of the savage.